I decided I'm going to make another video on animals, but it's time they finally get exposed. It's official. Animals are canceled. Dogs, a man's best friend, a child's one wish at Christmas, someone you can depend on when you're feeling blue. Or is that just what they want you to think? Cats, birds, hamsters, potbelly pigs, even the goddamn capybaras, they're all the same. For far too long, we've been fooled by these beasts. We attribute traits of innocence, loyalty, and simplicity to these so-called pets. But what if we've been mistaken all along? Their docile demeanor is merely a facade to lull us into complacency. Infiltrating our homes with their cute faces and lovable personalities. All of a sudden, you're trapped, forever chained to these beasts, being used for nothing but your warm bed and your bank account. Tell me, and be honest, when's the last time you got to sleep diagonally on your queen-size bed without being interrupted at two in the morning by loud noises your tired brain can only assume is an animal armed robbery? We're so quick to blame these ever-increasing crime rates on what the West calls the usual suspect, but what if we've been wrong all along? These beasts hide their intelligence in hopes to slowly turn the tables, eventually flipping the script. In the end, you become the one who is trained. And this all started for what reason? Companionship? <laughs> Let me tell you something, friend. This newfound life of animal comfort? It's dulled your senses. It's making you believe everywhere is a safe place. That your words will always fall on a friendly set of ears. But understand that after watching this, you'll be far away from home. Forgotten. Isolated. Abandoned. Anyway, I'm sorry for stressing you out so soon. Let's move away from the animal propaganda for now and get on with the actual point of this video, which will focus on a time when we had much less of an understanding when it came to animals and biology as a whole. I'm sure we've all had experiences with animals that were displeasing in one way or another. Let it go. Things like a deer infiltrating your yard and eating your wife's boyfriend's brand new garden. Or perhaps something worse, like being stung by a wasp while minding your own business. Or my personal favorite, pigeons dropping grade 3 bioweapons on your car multiple times a day. But let's be honest, these are all pretty annoying. Now, in the human world, these are all punishable offenses. Destruction of property, assault, vandalism. But sadly, these animals are never brought to justice the same way that humans are. At least not anymore. Let's take a look at a few animals that were forced to stand trial for crimes they've committed. We're gonna have to travel back a few centuries to get started. The year 1383 finally rolled around in Normandy, and crime rates were soaring. Bar fights were happening left and right, people were drunkenly sword fighting in the streets with baguettes, and the worst crime of all, there was tons of people playing soccer. The atrocities were endless. And while everyone was too busy getting distracted by all the nonsense going on around them, there was a child murderer on the loose. The first victim was an infant boy who was the young age of somewhere in between two and eight, probably, maybe. The boy's parents were off in the barn, doing the deed, if you will, paying no mind to the youngster who was alone in his crib. And thanks to this, the boy ended up brutally disfigured, his body and face maimed, passing away no longer than a few days after the incident. The townsfolk were obviously displeased with his outcome, and they ended up chasing the killer down. Ultimately, the killer was found, captured, and then thrown in jail. Due to the crime committed, the only outcome was to be hanged by their head at the gallows. The people of Normandy pelted this beast with rocks, rotten vegetables, and armpit hair. Just, you know, anything you can think of in France. A large crowd was forming to watch this event unfold, as there wasn't much else to do in the 1300s. Local farmers even brought the killer's relatives to watch. Wait, relatives? Why would local farmers be in contact with the killer's relatives? The time had finally come that the criminal was dealt with. The last word that was uttered from their mouth was nothing but a plaintive oink. Yes, the killer was in fact a female pig. It had attacked an unsuspecting child in its crib, absolutely eviscerated it, and then fled the scene but ended up eventually being jailed for the offense. Ultimately, the pig was convicted in court and was sent to the gallows. That's kind of strange, isn't it? A pig in court. However, this one mishap in France is far from being the only animal conviction. Animal trials are sort of a gray area within the last several hundred years, considering PETA is a thing now. But for whatever reason, animal trials hit their apex in European countries between the 14 and 1700s. But I guess the real reason they don't actually happen that much anymore is because of laws. Laws happened. That shit doesn't really fly anymore. There's been a multitude of different animals that have been tried for their crimes, such as a rooster that laid an egg and got tied to a stake and burnt to death, dolphins for their simple crimes against humanity, and moles that dug too many holes in Italy. But pigs were the most common suspect by a mile. A pig's reputation is directly correlated to their appetite, and they'll happily eat any type of meat they can find, human or animal. Obviously, it's not in their nature to be a natural-born killer, but I suppose there's just something about a tiny human that gets their hooves clicking. 
Animal trials took place in different court systems. Domesticated animals such as pigs and cows were supposedly under control of human beings, so they were tried in secular courts. A guilty sentence here usually spelled the end of the animal's life. However, domesticated animals aren't the only criminals afoot. Insects, rodents, and the like were unable to be tamed by humans, meaning only God could judge them. These types of cases were handled through ecclesiastical church courts. It doesn't really seem fair, does it? How in the world is an animal such as a rat or an insect supposed to make a solid case for itself? It just so happens that this shit was taken seriously. Enter the Phoenix Wright of Animal Rights. Bartholomew Chassanet, baby. Let's take a look at how he single-handedly changed the trajectory of rats for the rest of time. Once again, we take a look at France, but this time a whole different century. 1522. A time when barley production was just catching its first strides and before gluten allergies were contracted by the left-leaning pansies. A group of troublemakers were wreaking havoc on the town of Atun, decimating every barley field they could get their hands on, destroying the livelihood of farmers and other civilians who relied on such goods. The farmers headed to the church and pleaded for some kind of assistance. The church intervened, and they ended up charging the troublemakers with destruction of property. It seemed like a pretty cut and dry case. The evidence was laid out perfectly, and these hoodlums clearly had no chance at representing themselves in court. That was the case until a young man who was trying to make a name for himself as a new lawyer appeared, and offered to represent these clients, who also happened to be a group of rats. There's not really a better way to get your feet wet than fighting an unwinnable battle, but he was up for the challenge. On the first day of the trial, Bartholomew arrived in court. However, his rodent company did not appear. The court immediately decided that this was enough evidence to prove their guilt. However, Bartholomew immediately contested this claim, stating the summons to appear only mentioned some rats. That's rather vague, isn't it? Which rats could have possibly committed this crime? At this point, I assume the court said, damn, that's a good point, actually. And then they said, all right, all right, buddy. This time, we want all the rats in a ton to show up on this day at this time which at least bought Bartholomew a little more time to come up with more shenanigans. When the next court day came around, the cycle obviously repeated itself. No rats appeared. Well, of course not, exclaimed Bartholomew. Rats from all over a ton are incapable of getting here in that short amount of time. They can't ride by means of horse and carriage. They're forced to use their miniature rodent legs to travel. One kilometer is equivalent to 10 kilometers for them. They simply need more time to get their affairs in order. At this point, the court was frustrated but once again came to the conclusion that the proceedings would be rescheduled. But of course, it did not matter, because the rats, on their third attempt, still did not make it to the hearing. But Bartholomew, being the absolute genius he is, was able to make up another excuse for the rats. How on earth are they supposed to traverse such a torrid battlefield, filled with ferocious felines and bloodthirsty villagers that are all seeking revenge for the travesty that unfolded? In order for them to arrive, they must be granted and guaranteed a safe passage. And how could you possibly do that for every rat in a ton? Are you fucking kidding me? How the fuck does he keep doing this? If by any chance you were curious, if the rats were ruled against by this judge, they were facing excommunication, which, yeah, they're rats. The ball at this point was fully in the rats' court. The church court had to figure out a solution, a way to detain every single cat in town for the entire duration of the trial in a way that would not upset the villagers. That's a rather steep hill to climb. This led to months of planning, all for naught. Bartholomew had an answer to every question. The court's efforts were eventually exhausted, leading to a default victory for the rats. This story was just one of the few such cases of animal trials. Here's another ridiculous, more recent mishap. The case of Katya the bear. She was a female brown bear that was once part of the circus. In 2004, Katya was abandoned by the circus and left in her cage at a campsite where they first performed. Two separate incidents of mauling occurred while Katya was trapped inside of her cage. An 11-year-old boy whose childhood wonder got the best of him, and a belligerent 28-year-old man who tried to dap up the bear in question. Needless to say, it did not go as planned. So instead of getting animal control on the line, the police took the reins and said, all right, buddy, you go back to your stray dogs and skunks, leave the bear to the pigs. There was apparently no other place Katya could be moved to that would benefit her or the people in town. So the final option was sentencing her to life in prison. An interesting choice. She spent the next 15 years of her life in a prison cell equipped with a pool and salmon over ice. It doesn't sound that bad. It genuinely sounds like an upgrade from the previous situation. And I can only assume that being a bear in jail has its perks. No one's going to take your lunch or threaten you after hours. You're going to be running that shit. After completing her 15-year stint, she was eventually released in 2019 and relocated to a nearby zoo. After reading all of these different stories, I always came back to the same question. Can animals really commit crimes? The Wikipedia textbook states that non-human animals lack moral agency and so cannot be held culpable for an act. But I'd like to think that depends on the animal. 
Of course a caterpillar is incapable of committing war crimes. But what about something closely related to us? Or is even having this conversation too taboo in modern times? Who knows? Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to leave a like and consider subscribing. Until next time.